you please introduce yourself and tell me what course you teach? Uh, sure. My name is Dan Yano. Uh, I'm an associate professor in molecular and integrative physiology. Uh, and the course that I teach is MCB 314. It's Introduction to Neurobiology. And when is your course typically offered? Uh, it's a fall course. It's a Monday, Wednesday, Friday uh, course. And uh, uh, it's my first time teaching it this semester, 2018. I'm taking it over from uh, Professor Mark Nelson, who had taught it for... Uh, uh, for many years prior to me taking it over. And can you give me a brief overview of what is covered in your course and what are the learning goals? Yeah, so Intro to Neurobiology is going to cover uh, the basics about brain physiology. So uh, we begin by talking about what a neuron is, what it looks like, we talk a bit about the history of the techniques that have been used, um, we talk quite a bit about what's called synaptic physiology, so how neurons communicate with each other, um, there is a little bit of electrophysiology in there um, uh, in terms of how neurons fire, what are called action potentials, and how they communicate with each other. Uh, and then we move on to sensory physiology, so how we see, hear, touch, taste, etc. Uh, motor physiology and some of the disorders that come along with motor physiology like Parkinson's disease. And uh, the course wraps up with more cognitive and behavioral um, functions, so we talk about uh, motivated behavior, um, uh, appetite, attention, memory, language, uh, states of consciousness, those kinds of things. So it's a pretty broad spectrum of, of what the brain does. And what is the format of your course? Are there discussion sections? Is it taught via lecture or seminar format? Are eye clickers used? So right now the course is a pretty traditional Monday, Wednesday, Friday lecture-based course. Um, it's been taught that way for quite some time. I think it's worked out pretty well. Um, but you know, we'll have to see what happens over time. You know, we may want to expand the format a little bit and do other uh, types of more interactive sessions. I certainly would be interested in doing that. Um, I like interacting with students, and I think it would be fun and informative. Um, so, but for right now, it's a, it's a Monday, Wednesday, Friday class um, uh, without, uh, you know, without eye clickers or, or other types of, uh, of uh, additional features at this time. And how are students in your course graded? Uh, well, we have exams, um, and uh, so the way that it works is there's four exams throughout the semester. Um, and those comprise the grading for your for you know for the class. Um, there is an opportunity to improve uh, the student's score during finals week. So there are optional exams during finals week, and those exams can only help students. Uh, it's a sort of a complicated system, but I think it works out pretty well, uh, such that students can take all four exams during the semester. And uh, if they're happy with those grades, then there's no need to take a final. Um, but if they'd like to improve their grades, there are two opportunities during finals week to boost up uh, either the first half or the second half of the grades for the semester. And historically, which portion of the grade break breakdown do students struggle with the most? Well, um, you know, the grade breakdown is all exams, and the exams are a pretty similar format. I think different students have uh, trouble at different times during the course. Um, the beginning of the course is a little bit more quantitative than the end of the course, uh, meaning we do, uh, there are some equations that you have to plug numbers into to uh, calculate things like membrane voltages and you know, dealing with other aspects of electrophysiology. And I think for some students that could be a, a bit of a challenge. Um, but for students who are more quantitatively comfortable, then I think it works out uh, fine. Um, later in the semester, the course um, uh, transitions a little bit. There's lots of neural pathways that you have to uh, learn, ultimately memorize. And I think for some students, that could be a bit of a challenge. For other students, that's, that part's you know, uh, uh, pretty interesting. And then the end of the course is really... Um, uh, there's a lot more discussion of human behavior and psychology. And again, depending on students' backgrounds, uh, they may feel more or less comfortable with, with that material. So I think it really just depends uh, a lot on um, students' interest levels and, and their background, and, and that will determine if certain parts of the course are a little bit more challenging uh, than others.
Okay, and are there points associated with attendance? You know, no, no. Um, so the way the course uh, works when it comes to that is if students want to come, they may come, and if they don't want to come, they it's, it's up to them. Um, so uh, this semester, 2018, we are recording all of the lectures, um, and so if a student misses a class, they can download the, uh, the recording. Uh, the PowerPoints are all available before the lecture, uh, and so, uh, in theory, if a student misses a course or misses a, uh, a session, they can download the PowerPoint, listen to the lecture, and, uh, and get a lot of the information that way. Okay. And are there any required textbooks for the course? Uh, there is. I don't happen to have it with me, but, um, uh, yeah, the textbook for the course is fantastic. Uh, it was written by a group of uh, very well-known neuroscientists. And uh, I think they did just an amazing job of condensing, um, you know, a broad swath of neuroscience, but capturing the most essential elements. Uh, the figures are, are, are great. I mean, they really do capture what, what needs to be learned without, you know, going into detail that really isn't all that important. Um, so I, I love this textbook. I think it's very well written. So um, in general, uh, the way I approach teaching is whatever uh, we cover in the classroom is uh, what's fair game on the exam. Um, and if it's not covered in the classroom, then we don't put it on the exam. So, you know, there is information in that book that we don't cover in class. Um, and uh, so the book is so the book is not a substitute for going to class, uh, but it is meant to augment students' learning. And I fully recognize some students learn better um, either from a textbook or just learn better from a different way of, of presenting the material. Um, so the book is really there to provide uh, an alternative way to to, to learn the material, um, and the book provides some interesting historical contexts. So sometimes that helps students also to really see how the discoveries were made. Uh, there's interviews with some famous neuroscientists who made the discoveries, and so you get to kind of you know get some personal anecdotes along with with the science. So yeah, I I'm really in love with this textbook. And how do topics covered in your course apply to current research, medical, or scientific advancements? Well, yeah, I try really hard um, to make the uh, to tie the material. Uh, certainly in the clinical um, uh, difficulties that people have. And so, uh, you know, and there's all sorts of examples that, that we can draw from. Uh, so, you know, when we talk about membrane physiology, we talk about how disruptions in membrane physiology can lead to epilepsy. And we talk about that and we show some uh, videos of, uh, of different kinds of seizures and how they manifest and how they're caused by... Um, uh, different problems with the ion channels and the motor section. We talk quite a bit about Parkinson's disease and those movement disorders. We show quite a few uh, videos. I think you really can't learn um, certain aspects of, uh, of uh, certainly neurobiological disorders without actually seeing them. Um, and so I try, if not in every lecture, uh, in most lectures to uh, include uh, some uh, clinical information to, I think, make it more relevant for the students. And then certainly where we can um, try to bring in um, uh, new scientific discoveries that are tied into uh, the topics that we're covering. Uh, you know, quite frankly, it makes it more interesting for me to teach the course if we can make you know, these connections as well. And uh, the feedback that we've gotten so far is that the students have uh, enjoyed those connections as well. And are there any prerequisites students should take prior to this? Well, so the student has to be a junior or a senior to take the course. Um, I mean, the course, uh, I think, is challenging, and I think the students who are taking it would, would uh, concur with that. Um, and I think taking it at a, at a level earlier than being a, uh, a junior would, would be uh, a challenge. Um, I think that base of MCB coursework um, is uh, really important just to understand. I mean, we, we jump right into the biology 
uh, without taking any time to explain, for example, cellular physiology. Uh, my assumption is from day one that you understand uh, what cell membranes are, what mitochondria are, what they do, um, uh, etc. So uh, certainly basic MCB uh, coursework should be uh, taken. Um, but that being said, this is also meant to be an introductory neurobiology course. So I don't expect you to have any knowledge about the nervous system. Um, and so uh, whether you know what a neuron is or not, uh, I think from that perspective, uh, you'll be just fine. We can cover uh, the brain from beginning to end in the course. And um, what opportunities do you provide outside of class for students to ask you questions or get assistance? Well, so we have office hours uh, that are often richly attended. I actually really enjoy the office hours often. Students feel um, unencumbered to ask uh, questions that they really didn't feel comfortable asking in class. Um, they're often questions that aren't really tied to classroom topics, but just about neuroscience in general. I think most people are curious about the brain, and often people have heard certain things, or they have questions, or they have clinical questions uh, that they just want to talk about. And, um, and so we do that uh, during office hours. I have two office hours a week. Um, and I uh, am certainly open to uh, you know, meeting with students at other times if they you know, either uh, just have more questions or you know, can't make it during the office hours. Uh, but that's, that's uh, usually the way that we, we, we do that. Um, and is there anything else that you would like to tell us about the course? Well, you know, I, I try to make the course uh, interesting for students and, um, and, and relevant from a, a clinical perspective because I recognize uh, a significant proportion of the class is an interest in going into uh, some clinical field. Uh, and I'm happy to take feedback. Uh, this course has been taught uh, successfully for many years. Uh, Professor Mark Nelson taught this course, I don't know for how many years, I'm guessing eight, nine, ten years, somewhere in that range. Um, and uh, I think uh, had really crafted the course to be uh, a very high quality course. Before him, it was Dr. Fred Del Komen who had taught it. And uh, so the course has a lot of history, um, uh, but I'm very open to feedback and so I'm, I'm hoping to make it better as time goes on so um, hopefully by the time the people watching this video take the course it will be better than it is now and it will continue to uh, improve.